Hello, I'm Dr. John Ricotta, and this is the Society for Vascular Surgery briefing on the evolution of the Society for Vascular Surgery. In December of 1945, Dr. Ross Veal and six other surgeons met in Hot Springs, Virginia at the Southern Surgical Association to discuss the formation of an organization devoted to vascular surgery. Surgical approaches to cardiovascular disease were in their infancy, and there was great excitement around the surgical treatment of vascular problems. In 1937, the first patent ductus arteriosus was successfully ligated. In 1944, coarctation of the aorta was successfully repaired, and the first systemic pulmonary shunt for tetralogy of flow was performed by Alfred Blalock. In 1945, the first successful division of a vascular ring was accomplished. The heart-lung machine, while not perfected yet in humans, had been used successfully in the animal laboratory of John Gibbons. There was great optimism about the future of vascular treatment and a clear understanding that scientific rigor and high standards would be necessary if this potential was to be reached. A second organizing meeting was held in July of 1946. The name of the society was agreed upon and the society's first president, Dr. Alton Oxner, was elected. The first scientific meeting of the Society was scheduled to occur one day before the meeting of the American Medical Association on June 8, 1947 at the Dennis Hotel in Atlantic City. There were 31 founding members of the Society, including two honorary members, Rudolf Mattis and John Homans. While many of these individuals had roots in Boston, Baltimore, Chicago, and New Orleans, there was broad geographic representation which included both full-time academic and private practicing physicians. Only the two honorary members focused primarily on what we would now consider vascular disease. Most of the others were actively involved in general and cardiac surgery. Although the initial society membership was small, the goal was to be inclusive and its meetings were scheduled to coincide with the American Medical Association to attract as many interested physicians as possible. For the first several decades of its existence, the Society of Vascular Surgery held one-day meetings in conjunction with the AMA annual meeting. Papers included a mix of clinical and laboratory investigation and ran the gamut of cardiac, arterial, venous, and lymphatic disease. At the 1947 meeting, which occurred one month after Favillaro performed the first coronary revascularization in humans, Oxner's presidential address was on venous thrombosis, and papers were presented by Blaylock on his shunt, Gross on correction of aortic coarctation, and DeBakey on the effect of localized sympathetic blockade on the arterial circulation. This eclectic mix of presentations continued through the 1960s and 70s, although the number of cardiac papers presented diminished significantly toward the end of the latter decade. The last paper devoted specifically to cardiac disease was presented in the early 1980s. Society membership was expanded to 150 in 1957 and to 250 active members in 1963, where it remained until the new millennium. In 1966, the Society of Vascular Surgery separated its meetings from the AMA to begin the tradition of joint meetings with the North American chapter of the International Society of Cardiovascular Surgeons. Each organization was responsible for a one and a half day program which ran consecutively. Many members remember changing over their badges after the lunch meeting on the second day. The relationship between the Society for Vascular Surgery and the North American chapter of the International Society of Cardiovascular Surgeons continued to flourish over succeeding decades. In 1971, the President and Secretary of the International Society were made members of the Society for Vascular Surgery Council, and subsequently a joint council of the two organizations was formed. In the 1980s, the two societies founded a journal dedicated exclusively to vascular disease, the Journal of Vascular Surgery, which has become the premier journal in the specialty worldwide and is one of the most important and enduring contributions to vascular surgery made by the joint societies. There were seven objectives outlined by the society's founders in their bylaws. 
First, to promote study and research in vascular disease. Second, to define the role of surgery in these diseases. Third, to standardize methods of management. Fourth, to standardize nomenclature for vascular disease. Fifth, to promote teaching of vascular disease to trainees. Sixth, to encourage special training in vascular disease. And last, to hold annual meetings. These objectives have continued to guide the actions of the SVS to this day. The annual meeting has become the premier venue for presentation of clinical and basic research in vascular disease. The Lifeline Foundation was established to promote and fund vascular research. This task has now been taken over by the American Vascular Association. These efforts have resulted in successful partnership with the National Institutes of Health to fund young surgeon scientists in vascular research, summer research fellowships for medical students, and traveling fellowship programs that promote interchange between vascular surgeons around the world. The Society has formed many committees to address standards of management and nomenclature for venous and arterial disease and have recently focused on standards and credentialing in catheter-based interventions. In 1973, Dr. Wiley Barker's presidential address was the first one to directly raise the question of certification in vascular surgery. This marked the beginning of a three decade long effort that resulted in establishment of vascular fellowships, certification in vascular surgery in the mid 1980s, and most recently in the development of primary certificate in vascular surgery and integrated residency training programs beginning from medical school dedicated specifically to vascular surgery training and the development of an independent vascular surgery board. Vascular surgery has continued to evolve in the last six decades of the Society of Vascular Surgery's existence. Our specialty has separated from cardiac surgery. The role of non-invasive vascular laboratory has increased. Issues of venous disease and its management have come back to the fore, and medical management of vascular disease is becoming increasingly important. The endovascular revolution has fundamentally changed both the scope of the specialty and our approach to education of both trainees and surgeons in practice. Societal and economic pressures on vascular surgeons have increased. To respond to these changes, the Society for Vascular Surgery has also changed. In 2000, discussions began in the Joint Council about creating a more focused organization which could serve as the voice for vascular surgery in North America. This ultimately led to the conjunction of the American Association of Vascular Surgery, formerly the North American chapter of the International Society of Cardiovascular Surgeons, and the Society for Vascular Surgery into one larger society, retaining the name Society for Vascular Surgery. This single society, which was created in 2003, remains true to the goals of the original Society for Vascular Surgery and seeks to implement them through a coordinated, centrally administered program. The current Society for Vascular Surgery is a complex organization, a far cry from the 31 founding members who gathered in Atlantic City in 1947. The national meeting is a week long, not a one day affair. Yet the goals of the SVS, its dedication to ed education, research, and advancement in the field of vascular disease remain unchanged. The Society for Vascular Surgery has grown to a premier vascular organization dedicated to progress in vascular disease and is well situated to advance these goals in the decades to come. This briefing is made possible through a grant from Cook Medical. To learn more about your vascular health, visit vascularweb.org.